One man was shot. An 11 year old girl was struck by a stray gunfire. Breaking news right now. A 12 year old child is being rushed to the hospital after being shot in Philadelphia's King Sessing section. Officers responded to a home along the 5900 block of North 11th Street at around 845 this evening. They found a 13 year old girl who had been shot. Good afternoon, Jim Janelle. Police say that the shooter is just 14 years old and because of his age, they're not releasing his name. Cops say that he turned himself into police. Searching for the person who shot a 15 year old boy. It happened around seven o'clock tonight at 8th and Poplar. A 16 year old becomes the latest victim of gun violence in Philadelphia. He is the sixth juvenile killed by gunfire this year in the city. Philly isn't a real place. That's how I hear people react to the news lately. Things have gotten so wild here that the news stories don't even seem to phase people anymore. But y'all get my point. Y'all get what I had to say. I ain't even duck. But should I run? And as you just saw, for some, the popping sounds of gunfire have just become background noise. During the lockdowns of 2020 and 2021, a war was raging in West Philly. I mean, Hearst was just 16 years old when he was arrested in April of 2021. I mean, was part of a group called 616, a gang from West Philadelphia responsible for a lot of the bloodshed throughout Philadelphia. I mean, has made himself one of the most known and recognized individuals from that set. He had been charged with killing four people and injuring two others in three shootings between December 2020 and March of 2021. Wu Biddy, Lil Mayor, Naquan Smith, and Rodney Hargrove are all alleged victims of Ami Hearst. On May 7th, it was reported that two inmates broke out of the Philadelphia Industrial Correction Center, or PIC. By May 8, 2023, a manhunt was underway for the two men who escaped. One of them, I mean Hearst, was reported to be considered armed and extremely dangerous. According to authorities, I mean Hearst, who was in prison for the four homicides we just mentioned, and Nasir Grant, 24, who was held for gun charges and drug offenses, escaped from the Philadelphia Industrial Correction Center on State Road on Sunday, May 7th, three hours prior to their escape from Pick. I mean, Hearst, now 18, placed a pivotal phone call as per CNN acquired documents. In this call, he instructed an unknown male to meet behind the prison bridge. Following this conversation, the breakout plan was set in motion. At approximately 8.30 p.m. on May 7th, Hearst and 24-year-old Grant exited their cells, reaching the shower area to await the signal from another inmate Jose Flores Huerta, 
who was monitoring the guard tower. The moment Flores Huerta gave the all clear, the duo went through an exit, navigated a hole in the prison fence, and overcame two barbed wire barriers and in disappearing into the night. Despite being captured on camera, Philadelphia law enforcement only became aware of the escape nearly 19 hours later, highlighting a significant failure in the system. Before their escape, Hearst called 21-year-old Ziani Stalling, ending the conversation with a heartfelt, love you, Yanni. Stalling's identity was also used to book an Uber for Hearst and Grant post-breakout. The Uber was summoned to an intersection over two miles from the prison and transported them to South Philadelphia. During the ride, Hearst contacted Mike, identified as Michael Abrams, known on the street as Sco. A manhunt spanning Pennsylvania, New York, and Delaware followed dozens of tips. Grant was found three days later in Philadelphia, disguised in full female Muslim garb. Nine days post-escape, Amin's mom attempted negotiations for his surrender. After failed talks and missed deadlines, marshals apprehended Hearst entering a car with his mother and brother. He was taken into custody without incident along with his brother, Amir Wood. Stalling, Abrams, and Woods face four felony charges each for aiding the escape. Flores Huerta, linked to the prison break, is charged with two felonies. In a recent revelation, a video released by the Philadelphia District's Attorney's Office meticulously unravels the audacious escape that transpired earlier this year at Pick. 
DA Larry Krasner in a detailed presentation during a city council hearing emphasized the disconcerting ease with which the duo executed their escape plan. The footage captures the inmates adeptly opening their own cell doors. First Amin, then Nasir Grant. The two then seamlessly navigate through common areas without arousing suspicion by crawling and crab walking. 35-year-old Jose Flores Huerta, incarcerated for allegedly participating in a fatal beating outside Pet King of Stakes in 2021, is seen here checking for guards and serving as a lookout, and is charged with crimes including conspiracy and escape, the police department said in a statement. I mean, Hearst and Nasir Grant eventually get into the courtyard before ultimately exploding a hole in the exterior fence, a breach that had gone unnoticed for seven weeks. Krasner's narrative sheds light on the systemic shortcomings that allowed this escape to unfold. The video serves as a stark reminder of the challenges in maintaining secure correctional facilities, prompting a call for a thorough reevaluation of existing protocols to ensure the safety and integrity of such institutions in the future. Although I personally don't have much faith in those words, the incident once again raises critical questions about the adequacy of security measures and demands a comprehensive review to prevent similar lapses in the future. Prison conditions and staff shortages on State Road have been reported on and protested for years, but nothing seems to be changing. A prisoner at the Philadelphia jail was repeatedly stabbed in an attack by three men on a cell block with no guard nearby, leaving him to stagger back into his cell as no one came to his aid. The September 30th, 2021 incident captured on surveillance video obtained by the Inquirer went undetected after other prisoners rushed over to mop up the blood. Corrections officers and prisoners said the station was a consequence of intensifying staff shortages at the Philadelphia Department of Prisons where violence has been simmering among men who spend 21 hours a day locked in their cells. An Inquirer analysis of a week's worth of recent staffing rosters revealed that 20 to 30 percent of shifts on any given day were filled by officers and supervisors working overtime. Many officers put in 16-hour or even 22-hour work days. A lot of times, officers are just being forced to stay there because there is no relief, said a worker who spoke on condition of anonymity because of the staff are not permitted to speak with the media. That's why a lot of people are resigning. They're tired of it, said that person. Simultaneously, over 40% of scheduled shifts on rosters remain vacant. Unfilled shifts were notably prominent in key areas such as the law library, recreation, and education posts. Numerous cell blocks were marked with only one correctional officer to manage the unit, lacking a rover for support or escorting detainees. This shortage left gaps in disciplinary hearings and grievance processing, with instances where no personnel were available for these critical tasks. The City Controller Office said at the time of the Inquirer report in November of 2021, the pretrial detention complex was grappling with a severe shortage of staff with a deficit of 537 officers compared to its required staffing level. This shortage represents a substantial 28% vacancy rate within the workforce. Compare that to the 5.6% staff shortage with the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections, which runs post-convictions detention. The shortage of staff in Philadelphia's correctional facilities have led to severe consequences, with at least 21 deaths recorded during the pandemic, including five homicides and four suicides. The frequency of riots and unrest among inmates has increased, further highlighting the challenges posed by the staffing deficit. In the September 30th assault at CFCF, the injured individual received subsequent treatment. While the prison did not confirm the incident, a city spokesperson assured that all reported violence cases undergo investigation. Another incident occurred at Riverside Correctional Facility where inmates on two cell blocks protested, citing limited phone access and excessive lock-in times. The city 
reported a peaceful resolution within 20 minutes, which probably means a SWAT team or a CERT team just came on the block and either pepper sprayed it, locked everyone down, had their guns and all that, made everybody get on the floor and get back in their cell. The prison also wanted to emphasize that detainees receive a minimum of three hours outside their cells daily as mandated by a federal court order. The staff shortages remain a huge problem on State Road, which houses four facilities, CFCF, RCF, PIC, and the detention center. The 91-year-old House of Corrections was closed in 2020 due to failing infrastructure, no working sprinkler system, and no air conditioning, which made conditions miserable in the summer. All the failures that we just spoke about remain till this day, resulting in the extremely embarrassing escape by the two inmates on May 7th. The investigation into a May prison escape at the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Center. Yeah, new surveillance video revealed how two inmates, including one convicted of four murders, managed to get out, and it has the prison under close scrutiny right now. Action News reporter Corey Davis has more on the report. District Attorney Larry Krasner says a sleeping prison guard, a broken fence, as well as a motion detection system that wasn't being used, all contributed to issues centered around the escape of the two inmates from the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Center back in May. DA Larry Krasner shared a new video during the City Council Public Safety Committee meeting Wednesday. It shows 19-year-old Amin Hurst, who was charged with four counts of murder, and 24-year-old Nasir Grant, who's facing drug and weapons charges. They opened cell doors that were supposed to be locked. At one point, they're seen crawling toward a door as another prisoner acted as a lookout. Krasner said the prison was understaffed and that a guard fell asleep and did not conduct head counts, which allowed a long delay in realizing the inmates were gone. A count is supposed to be a count. A count is not supposed to be a, a nap. The two inmates escaped through a gap in the fence that had reportedly been there for weeks and was noticed by prison staffers several days before the escape. Krasner also told city council that the motion detection system had been turned off for more than a decade due to issues with false alarms. Prison Commissioner Blanche Carney said during the meeting that leadership changes and some upgrades have been made, but they said they need additional funding as they work on ways to enhance technology. Our camera infrastructure is over 25 plus years old. Um, it doesn't give us the, 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 the real time capability to pull video. City council member Sharon Vaughn introduced a resolution over the matter. It's very important that um, they get the proper funding, that the equipment is updated, that the facilities are maintained. Hearst and Grant were captured within 10 days after an extensive search that involved multiple law enforcement agencies. Their accused accomplices were supposed to be in court this week, but the hearing got postponed to December. The district attorney's office says they're still working this investigation. We'll definitely stay on top of it. Thanks for watching. This has been American Confidential. Be safe.